Hey, hey, it's Ruben here and I have all my stuff here with me because I decided today is a good day to go to Armenia. I am gonna try to get out of Tbilisi and then hitchhike to Armenia. So Armenia, here we go. Yeah, I'm in a bus from Azerbaijani people. It is absolutely crazy. He wanted to pee because it's the police building. That was a terrible idea. So the train from Tbilisi to Yerevan, Armenia only goes once every two days. It's kind of like a night train. It goes around 11 o'clock, arrives in the morning. It is about 50 euros though. It's a bit expensive for a budget traveler like me. So what I'm gonna do is catch the metro to the most southern part of Tbilisi and then hitchhike from there. I managed to get out of the city with a budget taxi and you see it immediately looks like some kind of desert. But from there I continue my trip. The name is Salaskuri. Salaskuri. The first car where I hold up my hand thinks I'm crazy for not being married. <laughs> yeah. Hi Holland, hi! So this is really cool, I'm in a very small village called Imiri and they have a mosque. Uh, and I was driving with a guy but I told him to drop me off before because I saw this kind of deserted train behind me. Right, let's check this thing out. I wonder what the story is behind this vehicle still being left there for all that time. Somehow these kind of deserted trains and stuff, it always fascinates me. Not a lot to see here, so I'll probably just go out. What a contrast over there. There's a compound with a, with a swimming pool. And so this is the entrance to the compound. And that's where the train is. Okay, I'm gonna continue. Yervan is waiting for me. I wasn't really prepared for what was gonna happen next. I was only 20 minutes away from the border and a bus stopped. Where's the day that I'm going to Armenia? I'm in a bus from Azerbaijani people. It's really bad. So what happened in the bus? Well, I stopped filming because I was very nervous. These countries have a very complicated relationship and things are going up and down, but they were very kind. They brought me to the border and told me to spread a message of love. So that was very surprising and cool. To the border so I can't be filming anymore. I'm halfway through, George is over there, and this is on my way to Armenia. This is so cool. I've never done like such a international border crossing on foot. It's uh, Eric, my first friend here in Armenia. Hello! Within minutes of arrival, the sun set, and Eric actually stopped, offered me a ride to Ijevan, where he lived, and he even offered me some drinks. Eric is absolutely crazy! He wanted to stop and pee because it's the police building, can you believe that? And then I arrived at the guest house. Hmm, seems my hosts were occupied. Okay, I made it. And you know what? They were in a very good mood. You know, there's always a silver lining to everything. The next morning, I decided to wake up early to explore Ijevan. It's kind of a small town, so there's not so much to see, but it does have some bits and pieces. But it gave me enough time to continue the trip in the afternoon to Dilijan. I mean, this really looks like a place that is beautiful during the summer. It even has a small little chimney. I have to say though, so far, not a lot of luck with hitchhiking. People just don't stop here. So I've been a bit unlucky. And you know, with the big bag and the small one with my bottle, it's, it's becoming very heavy on my, on my own bag. So I really hope somebody's gonna stop very soon. Body galus. Body galus. Body galus. <laughs> Thanks guys for taking me here. <laughs> well, I made it to the monastery right now because the friendly guys actually picked me up. So now we're going down. They actually come here to pray themselves. They even got me some candles. I wanted to be respectful, so I decided not to film inside. But what I can say, if you're curious, the outside is probably the most impressive one. Inside, it looks like a regular monastery. After the guys dropped me off, we actually went for a drink. Hey guys, welcome. How you doing? Hi. Took me home. And all the other guys are here too. <laughs> A lot of drinks flew and I had the best time Bye. ever, thanks guys. I just checked out of my lovely guest house. I'm um, just walking to the bus stop for the price of 100 dram, which is like $20 cents. I can get out of town and then from there start hitchhiking. Okay, so I'm outside the city right now. So I see a car heading on the way. Let's see what's gonna happen with that. I have good faith. Well, at least I got a hunk out of it. Okay, I'm just gonna walk. I tried it for like 20 minutes. Uh, it's not working here. It's an eight hour walk, so it's still manageable, but yeah, there's no other bus, so 
not really uh, have a lot of other options. A guy did eventually pick me up, but he asked me to pay, so we kind of bartered the deal. I think I paid like $5, so I was very thankful and happy that I was able to travel. Three seasons in the same moments. Sun out, snow, and even a little bit of rain. I will say Savan is not the most impressive place, but what is nice about it is its famous lake. This is the road on my way to Lake Savan. There is not a soul out here, and that's obviously because it's more like a holiday resort destination. Even the resorts just have the fences and bars up. Okay, this was not a good adventure. There's dogs chasing me up, so I'm just silently... Honestly, I'm surprised I didn't my pants because I was so scared. Wow. But like three massive dogs came just running at me so aggressive. That was a terrible idea. Ooh. Um, I'm gonna make a change of plan. I'm just quickly gonna check out the lake. I hope this view of Lake Sevan is good because this is the only thing that I'm gonna dare to see. Lake Sevan. Uh, I would say come here during the warm weather. I think you can skip it during the winter. From here it's like 25 minutes walking back to civilization. I hope I'll find a restaurant here in Savan that is open. It looks so cute, but it's closed. So we're gonna have to find something else. I have yet to be convinced. So funny, I wasn't even trying to hitchhike, but then Arman, so friendly, just stopped randomly himself. Apres, my friend. <laughs> So he brought me to the center and I did find a restaurant. I was so happy to eat something. I ate quite a lot. And then the restaurant was also close to the stop where the buses go. I arrived and I actually made a friend on board. He's Art. <laughs> I'm finally in Yerevan. Thanks, bro. <laughs> Behind me, you have the big square. It's, I think normally should have some fountains, but uh, yeah. No fountains active here. I think this one definitely looks like a fountain. Look at this. This is quite impressive. Looks pretty cool. Of course, the fountain won't be working, but I think this gives a good overview how beautiful this is. Furnace. It's like a little deserted marketplace. It looks very cool. I like the green. I'm gonna call this the city of switched off fountains. I don't get the feeling from uh, like one million people living here. And as with any other city where you do have rent-a-bikes, I wouldn't be Dutch if I wouldn't take it. I think it's a great way to explore the city, see a bit of it. And uh, yeah, these are some impressions of ooh, Yerevan. So I'm in the city center right now. I'm looking for the blue mosque. And now I thought for one second that it was that building over there. So I was just kind of like slowly approaching it. However, as I'm recording this, I figured out it's probably this one. So that's pretty funny. Well, let's take a dive. Of course, there wouldn't be a missing fountain that is not turned on. What I specifically like is if you look at the top, you can see that door is open. It kind of it looks really funny. Time to make some couch surfing, friends. So to offset the four liters of beer, I ordered some veggies. It looks very healthy. Here's what's your name? B52. My name is Marie. The short name is B52. Now we must give to this small short a little bit fire. Please. All right. Please. I'm loving it. Put it inside the small short and drink until the end very fast. Three, two, one. Guys, let's go. Three, two, one, suck it, suck it, suck it. Ah, oh, you're too late now. This is Dudu shot. Uh, inside is olive, vodka, lemon juice, olive juice, Tobasco, and black pepper. Uh, this shot you must drink at once. And of course, you must eat olive inside it. Cheers to cloud surfing. Oh. Good. Man, I, I, I always shit it. After even more drinks, I was really feeling it. It was also the day that I was organizing a meetup from Couchsurfing. So we all got together. My friend Zori, who I met in Georgia, showed up, brought some friends, and we went clubbing and we danced the night away. It was amazing. And we had so much fun that the next day we all came together as a group to celebrate the birthday of one of the girls. <laughs> It was Dina, Tina with a D's birthday, and we just threw a surprise party. And it was just a lot of banter and love throughout the night. Do you think that these four women uh, would actually... 
<laughs> hair. Have a long hair, man. You yeah. have long hair. <laughs> You're the prettiest one, yeah. yeah. What do you think is gonna happen? I'm just guessing. I think they prepared themselves. It's just like warm up, you know? A warm up to party, but what happened next? What's up? <laughs> we found this weird passageway, which is kind of scary. It's scary. It's scary. It's scary. It's <laughs> it's getting cool though. Hey, where are going? Yeah. yeah. What is he saying? What is he saying?